Hello everyone, I'm Hassan Elbaimi. I'm working at the University of Luxembourg as a postdoc. Um, I tell you about uh, plain text uh, awareness notions in the post quantum setting. And this is joint work with uh, Yaron Van Beer. And uh, the presentation is for PQ Crypto 2022. Uh, intuitively, we say uh, a public key encryption scheme is plain text aware if uh, adversary generating a valid ciphertext is aware of its underlying plain text. Or we can say it in a different way that the only the only uh, way that adversary can generate a valid ciphertext is to use the encryption oracle. The notion was introduced in the random oracle model to prove the CCA security of the OAP transform. Also, this notion has been formalized in the standard model later. So there are three uh, classical PA notions, uh, PA0, PA1, and PA2, and all of these three notions Adversary's goal is to generate a valid ciphertext for which its corresponding plain text is unknown to the adversary. In PA0, the adversary can make one decryption query. In PA2, the adversary can make many decryption queries. And in PA2, adversary can make many decryption queries and also it's allowed to eavesdrop some ciphertext. So here is the more formal definition for PA0 and PA1. Uh, we, say, if we say an encryption scheme is PA0 or PA1 if for any polytime adversary A, there exists a polytime extractor A star such that for any polytime distinguisher D, these two games are in the same show, where R is the random table. So in the real world game, the adversary is run by accessing to the decryption oracle. And then in the fake game, a star tries to simulate the decryption oracle. And a star is given the random table of A, or it's given the view of A. And the distinguisher giving the output of A tries to distinguish these two words or games. Uh, in order to define a PA2, we need to embed the possibility of the eavesdropping into the definition. So here it's done by introducing uh, an, an algorithm called plain text creator P. But this algorithm giving uh, a like query from A, it randomly chooses a message and then encrypts it and give the resulting ciphertext to the adversary. So this ciphertext might be the encryption of M or it might depend on M or, or some like you are, even it can be independent of the, the message. Uh, then uh, we say a public key encryption scheme is PA2 if for any polytime adversary A there is a polytime extractor A star such that for any polytime when it takes character P and any uh, polytime distinguisher D these two games are in the distinguisher. So here C star is given to both decryption oracle and to A star. And when adversary submits CSR as a, as a query, these two algorithms return help. Or in other words, the adversary is not allowed to ask for the decryption of CSR. So the rest are the same distinguisher given X tries to distinguish these two games. So what are the motivation to study uh, the PA notions in the, in the post quantum setting? Uh, the obvious one 
is that the adversary given PK can implement the, the encryption or the quantum device. So now the question is, does it break the notions or it doesn't? And the first, uh, like at the first glance, this seems the answer seems to be yes. So let's say if adversary prepares a uniform superposition over all messages, and then is able to implement the encryption oracle as a minimum oracle model in which uh, it gets the corresponding uh, ciphertexts, like the superposition of the ciphertexts. Later, if the adversary measure this state, it gets a random valid ciphertext. And if uh, since the, the encryption scheme is one way, like the, by the one wayness of the encryption oracle, the adversary is not aware of uh, the plain text inside of this random ciphertext. So this is intuitively a break of the K notions, but I was cheating a bit because this impl implementation of the encryption oracle is not, might not be possible because usually the ciphertext size is uh, has a bigger uh, space, like the, the ciphertext space is bigger than the message space, and but the quantum operation has to be unitary, so uh, this implementation might not be possible without using any ancillary register. So we we consider a standard implementation in which cat M and Y goes to M and Y XO encryption of uh, PK on, on M with, with uh, R is, is a random uh, like randomness that is a classical and it's fixed for all the like each query. And here we can consider um, the Y uh, register as a kind of answer register that stores the output of the encryption oracle on the message M. Another reason uh, would be that um, like the sort of post-quantum PA notions has been used in some existing proofs uh, in high level. So formalizing this notion might lead to more accessible security proofs. And also uh, we have this implication that PA2 plus CPA uh, gives us CCA. However, we show that uh, in this paper, we show that PA2 plus QCPA doesn't imply QCCA. So if we want to target uh, QCCA security notion, then the classical PA notion, the strongest one that is PA2 is not sufficient. So the question is what we need to insert instead of this question mark to, uh, to get this implication. So in order to define a PA notion similar to the classical case, uh, we need to like consider the number of decryption queries that can be one or many, then also what access the quantum adversary has to the decryption oracle, can be classical or quantum, and what uh, what like irreducibility that we consider only to be classical. The reason is that the user use their classical schemes to communicate. So if adversary errors of the communication, then it only gets the classical ciphertexts. So considering errors of being quantum, as a, like a quantum state or quantum ciphertext might be too exotic for our set. So in total, we have six security notions that uh, four for PA0 and PA1 and two for PA2. Here is the more formal definition for PA0 and PA1 when, like post quantum PA0 and PA1 when only there is a classical decryption query. So replace all the polytime addresses with the quantum polytime. 
And also, instead of using a random table of A, you use uh, internal quantum register of A because A uh, is quantum adversary and can, can do some quantum operation to get the uh, randomness. For instance, applying the Hadamard to the uh, cat zero and then measure the, the, the state gives uh, a random bit. So here the A star has access to the internal register of A and also A can output a quantum state and distinguish it through the measurement and the computational basis to get uh, its output. So similarly, like uh, we say a public key encryption scheme is, is uh, PA0, PA1, if, if there exists a plain text extractor that makes these two games distinguishable. So uh, PA0 and PA1 with the quantum decryption queries are similar. The only difference is that adversary has a quantum access to the decryption oracle, and a star has to simulate the quantum decryption queries. So here is like uh, the, the standard implementation of the decryption escape. Uh, the PA2 with the classical decryption queries or uh, is defined similarly to the classical case with the difference is that we use a quantum PT, quantum polytime adversaries, also the like quantum internal register of the adversary. Uh, this part, uh, since we only can say classical, so it's, uh, it stays the same. And uh, the plain text creator P only output a a classical ciphertext. So we say, uh, like a public encryption scheme is PA2 CVEC. If for any uh, QPT adversary A, there is QPT plain text extractor A source such that it works for any QPT plain text character P and any QPT distinguisher D. Uh, like this, these two games are in the same. PQPA2 with the quantum decryption queries so, well, is defined similarly. So we just replace um, like the decryption query with the quantum decryption query. So A is allowed to make it the quantum decryption queries, and the ASR has to simulate the quantum decryption queries. Here is the table of our results. So all the implication and non-implication. Some of the implication and non-implication are easy uh, to see and uh, by transitivity or it has a really uh, obvious or like, trivial uh, proof. Uh, I only discuss the non-implication that are not easy to see, so uh, it's a formal proof. So in order to show that a notion with the PQPAI with the classical decryption query doesn't imply uh, PAI in the quantum decryption queries, we take a public key encryption scheme that is one way and it's uh, PQPAI CDEC. We commit to a valid ciphertext CV. And then we change decryption to, to a decryption prime, in which in, in, in decryption prime, a periodic function f on cv is embedded in, in deck prime. And also a query to deck prime on input of pair from the cv gives us r and r open, that r is a randomness to generate a cv, and also r open is a randomness to generate a commit. So, uh, we show that uh, this uh, uh, this public encryption scheme with new decryption of the deck prime remains PQPAI deck. This is uh, this holds because a classical adversary, the quantum adversary with the classical access to this function f cannot get CV and therefore uh, cannot get all and all open. 
so if this scheme remains uh, PQPAI CDEC. And we allow, we, we say that distinguisher checks if uh, CV is equal to encryption of M and R or, and uh, the verification of commitment holds true. So now, if we consider a quantum, uh, like adversary with the uh, quantum decryption queries, then it can, this adversary can employ the Simon's algorithm to get CV. And now in the real world, adversary can query CV to the decryption oracle and gets the message M, and also it can get R and, op R and R open and can pass these checks to the property one. But you no, know, like with the with the with the probability of the like the the, the success of Simon Zagot. And then but in the fake game, the a star is not allowed to to decrypt C V because C V is not generated by the A. So uh, if a star can can decrypt C V, then it's kind of break the one wayness of the encryption scheme and also if it can check uh, without decrypting past this, these two checks, it, it might break also the binding property of the commitment. So in the fake game, the adversary cannot output output some and the message and, and R and R open that that these two checks holds true. But in, in the real game, the adversary can apply Simon's algorithm to get CV and then to uh, like query CV to get M and also query on pair of CV to get all and all open and pass these two checks. In order to show that uh, a notion with uh, quantum decryption queries and like PA1 with quantum decryption queries doesn't imply PA2 with the classical decryption queries. We take a public key encryption scheme that is PQPA1 QDEC and is QCPA secure. Then we make this, this encryption scheme malleable by defining a new encryption oracle that maps M to encryption of M and like adding a zero to, to the ciphertext. And also we define the encryption prime to be encryption on CB to be the encryption of C. Uh, we show that uh, this new encryption scheme with encrypt prime and deck prime remains PQPA1 QDEC. The reason is that is that uh, this adversary doesn't have poss possibility of the eavesdropping, so it cannot use this malleability to, to break the notion. But adversary that has like a PA2 adversary that has a, a access to the plain text creator that like is able to eavesdrop uh, the communication can send two messages, messages 0n and 1n to the plain text creator and gets a ciphertext as C and, and 0. And then it can change the ciphertext to C and 1 and uh, uh, like submit it as a decryption query. We show that if this new public key encryption scheme with encrypt prime and deck prime is PA2 CDEC, then it's not QCPA. The high level idea is that we, since we assume that this PK is PA2, it means that uh, for any, uh, uh, like there exists, there exists a plain text uh, extractor that works for any plain text creator P. So we define two plain text creator P0 and P1. So P0 encrypts the messages zero to the end, and P1 encrypts the, the message uh, the, the message one to the end. And then we can use this to break the QCPA script. In order to show that the PQPA0 QDEC doesn't imply PQPA1 and CDEC, 
we take public key encryption screen that is one way and it's k0 q day and we commit to a, to a wireless cipher text c later we write this cd as a xor of two randomly chosen parts so c sub v to one and c c sub v two or randomly chosen and we do the same for our open and then we change the decryption uh, decryption oracle to a new decryption oracle that reveals one of these shares randomly in each query. Also it reveals R as well. The Heidelberg idea is that in a PA0 since adversity has the one access to decryption oracle, it only gets one of these shares that are useless. So we can show easily that this uh, encryption scheme remains PQPA zero Q deck because giving random shares of CV and R open doesn't give any information to the adversary. On the other hand, adversary with many decryption queries can get CV and then in the real game, adversary can get M from CV and checks if CV is equal to encryption of M and R and if the verification of commitment holds true. But in the fake game, the A star cannot decrypt CV. And also with the binding property of the commitment, that we say cannot pass the, these two checks. So uh, the distinguish attack can distinguish a uh, real game and fake game uh, when that Versailles has a like P1 access to the I mean the classical decryption queries. We also studied relation with the QCCA notion. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the strongest uh, P, uh, PA notions, uh, like the PA2 notion actually, uh, with the CPA doesn't apply QCCA notion. Uh, here we show that PQPA2 uh, QDEC with QCPA implies QCCA. Also, we left a uh, uh, PA2 CDEC plain text of our encryption scheme to a PQ PA2 QDEC plain text of encryption scheme using quantum secure PRPs. So, the conclusion is that we formalize the plain text of our notion in the superposition access model, and this gives us six security notions. We studied the relations between these uh, notions. And also we, we, sh we show the relation with the QCCA notion. And we, we lift the postcode to PA2 encryption scheme to a PQ, PA2 QDEC, plain text of our encryption scheme using quantum secure PRPs. This concludes my talk and thank you for listening.